Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. Following my previous Xingyi stepping video, I'd like to introduce the same topic for Bagua. Again, here I won't talk about any beginner's content such as different walking patterns and so on. Instead, I will focus on Tang Ni Bu or Mud Wedding, which is the iconic stepping practice in many Bagua styles, especially Cheng style. Similar to my Xing Yi stepping video, I will elaborate the imagery that inspires the mud wadding pattern. So, topic covered in this video include imagery in martial art movement, second, Cheng Tinghua and Tang Nibu, <coughs> third, sorry, missing element in Tang Nibu, fourth, key training principles, fifth, Demonstration and the six takeaways. First topic, imagery in martial art movements. I introduced the Yi Jing or aesthetic consumption theory in my Xing Yi stepping video. My argument is that based on this concept, Chinese aesthetics focus on Yi Jing, the aesthetic perception in the mind created by projecting meanings into a scene. Also, I explained that based on this concept, internal style of practice emphasized less perception of imitation in movement creation and development in order to grasp the nature and the spirit of the imitated object. As a result, internal styles practice focuses on the martial applications, not a vivid imitation of certain objects. This is the application of the concept of imagery in traditional internal style of practice. Please watch my Xing Yi stepping video to get a better understanding. The link is in the description. In Bagua practice, in addition to the concept of Xiang Xing Qu Yi or adoption of pictographic meaning in training, there is another practical approach called Xing Sui Yi Zhuan or the form follows the changing of the mind in circular turning. It reflects the relation between the Bagua movements and our mind. Our mind guides the movements. Easier, than, easier said than done. The reason is that the term mind here means the primordial mind, not the postmodial mind. To distinguish these two terms, please watch my previous video. Basically, in martial art training, postmodial indicates the method that Practitioners plan their movements in training and self-defense situations. Well, the primordial mind means natural reflex or subconscious mind, which is the result of long-term intended practice. So, at a certain level in Bagua practice, one should not merely follow the fixed routine or stepping pattern, but instead one should Improvise. Improvisation should be part of the daily training routine. But please keep in mind that this type of exercise should be practiced only after reaching a certain level of Bagua training. Now, let's talk about another important application of the imagery concept in Cheng style Bagua called Tang Ni Bu or Mud Wedding Stepping. Second topic. Cheng Tinghua and his mud riding walking. I have introduced the Cheng Tinghua and his style in my previous video. Link is in the description. It talks more about the creation and the evolution of a Cheng style Bagua over the years. I recommend you watch that video first. If you haven't already, then then come back to this video. Basically. There are two types of walking or stepping method in Bagua. First, Zi Ran Bu or natural stepping. Second, Tang Ni Bu or mud wedding stepping. 
Tang Ni Bu as a walking method is mainly used in Cheng style. Before we proceed, let me ask you, what practice did Cheng Tinghua borrow the mud wedding pattern from? Well, Cheng Tinghua invented this method by adapting his former training in Beijing style wrestling. In Chinese wrestling, one of the most widely used stepping methods is the mud wedding stepping. Even though the walking pattern is totally different from the Bagua, both Beijing style wrestling and the Bagua use the same stepping and ground grabbing motion of the feet to generate force. We all know that prior to practicing Bagua Zhang under the tutelage of Dong Haichuan, Cheng Tinghua practiced and taught Beijing style wrestling for decades. Even after becoming an accomplished Bagua Zhang master, he continued to teach Beijing style wrestling in parallel to Bagua Zhang. When Dong Haichuan was in his senior years, Cheng Tinghua regularly invited Dong, Dong to his wrestling school to teach him Bagua. Then, after Cheng's Bagua training reached a good level, Cheng taught Bagua on behalf of his teacher, while Dong Haichuan supervised Cheng's teaching at his wrestling school until Dong Haichuan passed away. That's why many of Dong Haichuan's disciples, including Zhang Zhao Dong, were actually trained by Cheng Tinghua, not Dong Haichuan. Dong Haichuan's greatness lies in the fact that he could help his students improve their Bagua skill based on their prior training backgrounds. Cheng Tinghua adapted wrestling stepping techniques into Bagua training and eventually it became an iconic practice of Cheng style. Of course, you can find this method in other styles of Bagua as well, but since it was first adapted from wrestling training by Cheng Tinghua. People credit him as the inventor of mud wedding stepping. Furthermore, Dong Haichuan left a document containing 36 Bagua training points with one of his students, Quan Kai Ting, a royal court bodyguard of the Qing Dynasty Emperor. This document recorded all the important principles of Bagua Zhang, but there was no mention of mud wedding stepping whatsoever or anything even remotely close to it. It is considered as another evidence that Tang Ni Bu or mud wedding pattern had nothing to do with Dong Hai Chuan's own Bagua practice. By the way, allow me Allow me to digress for a bit here. In my video introducing Cheng Tinghua, I mentioned that wrestling is not considered a martial art in China. Quite a few people wrongly assumed that, that to be a belittling remark. I, I often tell my students that in China, there is this proverb, 三年把事, 当年教, which translates to one year of wrestling practice is equal to three years of Kung Fu practice. To be absolutely clear once and for all, I never claimed Chinese wrestling to be inferior to Chinese martial art. I only said it was not a martial art. The training method and the standard in Chinese wrestling are totally different compared to martial arts. Chinese society has a much narrower definition of martial art compared to Western society. Kung Fu, as the West know it, is martial art to, to the Chinese. The West does not consider Chinese wrestling to be Kung Fu and similarly Chinese society does not consider Chinese wrestling to be a martial art. Yes, Chinese wrestling developed in parallel to Chinese martial art, but it does not fit the Chinese definition of a martial art and it does not considered one. To give you another similar example, in my video on Taoism and meditation, I explicitly mentioned that Tai Chi routine, Bagua circle walking and Xing Yi Sandy stance were not, are not considered meditation even though they used 
Taoist principles because they do not fit the definition of Taoist meditation. In my opinion, clarity of definition and standardization of the terms are the utmost importance when talking about different practices that may be interrelated or may possess some common aspects. I plan to publish a dictionary containing terms involved in internal martial arts, Taoism, and the related field in the near future. Alright, now let's resume our dis discussion on Tang Nibu. Topic 3 Missing element of this practice in general. I have another question for you. What is Tang Nibu? I guess most of you would say something like Tang Nibu is the Bagua stepping akin in riding through mud, and that is the unique footwork of Cheng style Bagua. Well, that is only partially correct. As mentioned in the title of the topic, there's the missing elements involved. It's just like the topic hints that it is the missing element of this concept. Let me elaborate this. The Chinese term Tang Ni Bu or mud riding stepping in English consists of three characters, where Tang means riding, Ni means mud, and Bu means stepping. It's just a literal translation. In the old Chinese language, normally the common structure of a word consisted of just one character, and in modern China, since many people nowadays lack traditional knowledge, and most of the time their interpretation is the same as in English, which is incorrect in translating this term. Today, I'd like to tell you the meaning behind the term, and I'm sure you, it will help you take your practice to a whole new level. So, mud riding is not one again, one action. In fact, it consists of two separate actions. One is riding through water, and the other is stepping in mud. Riding through water requires the leg, especially the thigh, to apply a pushing force, and the mud stepping imagery does not involve simply stepping in mud. Be careful here. The correct image involves one slight sliding forward through mud, given that mud is slippery. In another words, the idea behind the imagery involves a sudden loss of balance accompanied by a sliding of the front foot caused by due to slipping in the mud. Thus, the practice involves an intentionally simulated loss of a balance and a sliding motion. The key training point here is that the force is pushed by the thigh, not by the foot. If one thinks that mud riding is one action, then of course it would be right to focus on the foot. In practice, one should focus on the thigh not on the foot, because there are two actions including both thigh and the foot. This is the missing element in so-called mud riding stepping of Cheng style. If you were unaware of this before or find this hard to understand, please know that you are not alone. And most people in Bagua community perceive the mud riding stepping as one term and they focus mainly on the foot. Now, we can see the importance of imagery. And more importantly, correct interpretation of imagery is the key to effective practice. I hope it is very clear now. Topic 4 Key Principles in Training to help my student understand Bagua Tang Nibu better, I used four sentences to guide their practice in my teaching. I'd like to say it in Mandarin first. It is Ping Xi Ping Luo, Cha Di Cun Xing, Luo Jiao Qi Ling, Ho Deng Qian Qi. In English, they are first, front foot left and step parallel to the ground. Second, front foot slides toward an inch. 3. 
Front foot steps down, then front knee pushes forward. Four, back foot pushes forward. Now, let me explain one by one. First, front foot lifts and steps parallel to the ground. When practicing Tang Ni Bu stepping, the feet should always be maintained parallel to the ground. It requires the ankle to be flexible and the stepping to be very light instead of heavy, unless it is a fudgy movement. Of course, you can see natural stepping method like those used in other style of Bagua, since Cheng style has its own style of natural stepping too. I will call it Cheng style natural stepping, but I prefer to practice Tang Ni Bu with special emphasis on the sliding motion even when stepping with speed. The reason is very simple, because it is a Cheng style. I would even go so far as to say that there is no pure natural stepping in Cheng style Bagua since Tang Ni Bu is an iconic stepping method. In other words, fast Tang Ni Bu stepping effectively becomes Cheng style natural stepping. Two. Foot slide forward an inch. Then, when the foot lands on the ground, one should make it slide forward with a small distance, about half an inch to three inch, depending on the purpose of the practice. Be careful here, the word here, here is slide, so keep moving the foot toward and also a bit downward. If you are a beginner, I recommend extended movements, so you should try to slide your foot for 3 inches. With time, Tang Ni Bu will become second nature to you, and then you can change the sliding motion to just an inch or half an inch. Again, a natural Tang Ni Bu is still Tang Ni Bu. It does not become a pure Zi Ran Bu or natural stepping as the name suggests. Please keep that difference in mind, it takes a lot of practice, but it's worthwhile. 3. Front foot step downward, down, then front knee pushes forward. When the front foot steps slide, sliding, the front thigh extends forward with strength in the direction of the front foot. The movement of the front knee is initiated by the from the thigh. It is a key point here, which I mentioned in the previous topic. Furthermore, it serves as a reminder that the knee should not push forward too early, or else it won't be considered Tang Ni Bu. Correct Tang Ni Bu practice involves a combination of correct timing, correct an angle, correct direction, and correct speed. 4. Back foot pushes forward. Before the front foot lands on the ground, the movement of the front foot is controlled by the forward pushing motion of the back leg, and the strength of the back foot gets transferred as force to the front foot when it lands on the ground. So, the front foot leads the movement, but the back foot controls the force of the front foot. It sounds a bit confusing, but please just give it a try and then you will figure it out by yourself. The back foot controls the forward motion is very similar to Xing Yi stepping, which I introduced in my previous video. Please try to work on it physically. Intellectual understanding will only have so much in working on a physical practice. These four principles are just the basic ones, mainly focusing on developing Bagua force. However, they are, they, are, they are very important and also common to many styles of Bagua. I always try to examine my own practice based on these four principles. They may seem very easy to read and understand in theory, but they are hard to correctly apply in practice. The phrase easier said than done, pretty much describes the nature of study of other internal styles. Topic 5. 
demonstration. Since we are talking about Tang Nibu, it's best for me to demonstrate it in today's video. I will use slow movement first, followed by natural speed movements. My suggestion is that you should practice both methods daily. Normally, start with slow movements, then proceed to natural stepping, natural stepping movements, and then go back to slow movements. I recommend you dedicate 20% time to the first set of slow movements. 50% of the time to the natural speed movements and the remaining 30% of time to the final set of slow movements. After that, you can work on other practice. Ok, now slow motion first. Ok, now natural speed. Topic 6 Takeaways First, in addition to the application of the imagery concept, Bagua practice also adapts the principle of Xing Sui Yi Zhuan, or the form follows the changing of the mind. Second, Cheng Tinghua invented the Tang Ni Bu practice by adapting a similar practice from his wrestling practice. Tang Ni Bu is the iconic practice in Cheng style Bagua, even though Zi Ran Bu or natural stepping does exist. Oh, one should always practice Tang Ni Bu. 3. Tang Ni Bu involves not one but two actions, side pushes through water and the foot slides in mud. Force is from the side, not the foot. 4. Four practical principles to guide your stepping practice along with recommendations for daily practice has been introduced. I highly recommend you follow this in your own daily practice. Thank you for watching, see you next time and enjoy your practice.